what you're going to need is you're going to need your drawing, your photograph, or your image, and a pen because we are going to be tracing and then shading the actual piece. First, I'm going to start towards the top portion of it. You can use a ruler to help guide your lines, but I prefer when I have shorter lines to use just my hand and pen. So when you're working those little spots that I had just like shaded, you'll notice that I'm going to end up fast forwarding here in just a second. All I'm doing is carefully with pen, since you cannot erase, trace the lines that I have done. However, I'm not tracing all of them. I'm just going to trace the areas that I know are on the exterior edge of the right hand side. My pen just spit up, so I just rolled it on the paper. If that ever happens to you, um, when you have the like, ink at the edge of your pen and it like is going to make a blob on your piece of paper, make sure that you roll it on another piece of paper to help out. So I traced the right hand side. Now I'm going to the top. Once I finish the top hand side, I'm going to start filling in some of those lines that I have below. However, I'm going to start shading because I like to shade as I go along versus having a whole bunch of pen throughout and then my hand accidentally rubbing it. So up on top, as you guys look at the photograph that you are mimicking or looking at, look at the texture that is there. So here I am drawing the line that is right on the very, very top underneath those little bumps. Then I am looking at the texture that's within inside of these spaces. So they are um, technically really hard to see because they're in the shadows. So I just hatch them at a slight angle going downward. The line that is right below, uh, you'll notice, is a little bit darker. So when you are going in there, you're going to end up just shading it. As you notice, I am going in a left to right motion using my vanishing point as the direction that my line is going towards on the right hand side. So every time that I'm making my mark, I'm always thinking about what direction that is need to go. So now we're going to continue tracing the top hand side over here on the left uh, before we move on to shading it on the left hand side. So we're just mimicking everything we just did on the right. However, the left hand side is a lot lighter. So when you're looking at this on the left, you'll notice that I'm going to just add a few little dots with inside the larger spots which are going to make it so it's not perfectly white, it has slight shading to it. I'm going to continue this dirt throughout the whole space going down. However, when you get closer to the, this area right here, it's going to get really small, and so you only need a few dots to make that work for your shading. Now I'm going to trace the longer line. So like I said, I like to use my ruler when I use long lines and use just my free hand when I use short. I always make sure that my thickness of my pen is in the correct location as well whenever I'm using mine. Here I'm going to start freehanding again this is a little bump on the left hand side and then I'm going to use my ruler. You'll notice right here I'm checking my pen spot so it doesn't touch that pencil and then it does so then I continue. I'm going to continue drawing my lines on the top hand section the little um, grouping of lines and I'm going to go group by group as I work down. So here I'm going to be tracing my lines on the left as well as on the right. Take your time and pause as you need. Once we are done with tracing our lines, what we need to do is start shading. The areas that you see that are over here that are a little bit darker aren't black. So we are going to do something called hatching. Remember it is single strokes going in the same direction that you just keep overlapping until you have the density that you want and they're parallel to one another. So I'm just gently moving my pen across this space to get the density or the value of the pen work that I would like. I'm going to do this also on the right hand side, however the right hand side is in shadow so there's going to be some darker areas within that area.
Once you have completed the shading on the right hand side, double check to see if the upper area is the correct value in relationship to the space below. So mine was a little bit on the light hand side, which I noticed, so I'm going back in and throwing a couple more hatch lines within there that are vertical. Now we're going to move over to the left. There is an overhang. The overhang itself, you're going to go to the opposite vanishing point on whatever wall it is. So this is on the left hand wall, therefore it is going to the right vanishing point. So this wall is the overhang, so it's going to be in shadow, so it's right here, it's a small vanishing point moving to the right hand side. So your lines themselves are little hatch lines that you are going to be drawing that are just um, at an angle towards the right. Whenever you're drawing um, lines, you can start thinking about, um, now this one right here is going to go to the left, okay? So this overhang is going to the left vanishing point. And so when you are drawing, the lines themselves should be at the angle as if they're going to the left vanishing point. So that this overhang itself, you're looking at the bottom side of it right now. So that bottom side is going to be in shadow and it's on the right hand side and it's going to the left vanishing point. So sometimes what's easier to think about is the lines that are surrounding it and what direction it's going. So we are going to do a front face now. So it's facing the sun or right now technically this one's in shadow. So we're doing vertical planes. It's not going to the left vanishing point. It's going straight up and down. So therefore our lines are going straight up and down. So now we are going to be working on those little oval circles that are in there as well as the those little like sections that are in between. When you're looking at the photograph, don't trace your pencil lines perfectly because you want to shade in pen only where shadows actually are. So as you're noticing, I'm really paying attention to where I am placing my pen marks because you can't erase. However, there will be mistakes in the future, which you'll see on my piece that, hey, we just have to make it work. But when you're working on this, I am shading the underside right now of the, um, like circle that's attached there as well as placing those little like L-shaped uh, shadows within but then above the circle to make it so that you can actually see the circle you're going to shade in that space just slightly which is going to be a light little shadow that's being casted on it from the overhang that we just shaded so that overhang is preventing light from hitting that area so right here I'm shading in that little area I was just discussing on the overcast or the cast shadow that is being projected onto that surface. You're going to continue this on the left and the right hand side. I don't have any more drawn on my piece so I'm just going to freehand it but you should have yours drawn. Okay so continue going through the left and the right. However the right hand side is slightly different so when we get over to there I will discuss that. Make sure you guys are observing your shadows observing the highlights. Highlights should not have pen on it, only shadows should have pen on it. Also, how dark are they? So if they're a lot darker or a lot lighter, you're going to end up making the lighter ones have very small amounts of pen work. Anything that is darker, you're going to either overlap multiple times or you're going to cross hatch or you're going to just make it a lot darker by filling in, which we'll be filling in on the right hand side here shortly. So now on the right hand side, the marks in the um, that we're going to be making are going to be a little bit darker just because it's in shadow. However, I'm going to start off in the same value that I did on the left. But this side, the light is hitting it different. Therefore, we can see more of that ball. I can see the entire left-hand side of the ball plus a little bit of the right-hand side. Not the entire ball entirely is shaded in. Otherwise, it doesn't look realistic because the light hits it differently. So observe what your photograph um, that you printed off or looking at screen is um, looking like for your shadows and mimic what you see. Don't just draw what you think you see, always draw what you see or shade what you see. So here I'm going to go quickly through this. That's why I'm speeding up my video so that you guys aren't watching me going quick or like slowly. There's that little box that we're going to be filling in in the center there. 
that is going to be black. So that is going to be something that I'm going to hatch initially and I'm going to hatch again until I get it to black. I'm gently going over the top of this with a vertical hatch line, which is farther apart from one another, to make it so it's slightly in shadow because that space is in shadow. There I had a spit up of my pen, so now I'm making my spit up work and I'm making it part a little bit darker in that area. So now I'm going back in and darkening up some of my other spots because I just had to darken up the others because of my spit up. I am filling in my little square with hatch lines. Then I'm going to go back in with hatch lines that are going the opposite direction, so that is going to be cross hatching. So when you're cross hatching, it's just helping you fill in the space a little bit more. So if you notice, I was going at the same angle that the lines from above and below that area are, so orthogonal lines that are going to the vanishing point. Now I'm going to start working on the line section that is below. So this area right here, you're going to look at that it has little bumps. So I am going to do the right hand side slightly different than the left hand side. So you can see there are two different ways of doing it. So right here, I'm going along my pencil line and just making little bumps that go down and then come back up at approximately the locations that they need to be. I'm going to shade some vertical lines after I get my spit up off my pencil again to darken up the left hand side of my space that I just worked on. However, I want to make sure that all the stuff I just worked on is still visible. So you could darken up if you need to afterwards. Now we're going to start working on the left hand side, that same area that we just did. So either you could do where you just trace it like I was starting to, or you could take your straight edge and you can draw your line going across. This line that's going across is going to end up being a lot thicker and darker once you guys start working on it. So my line was, um, my pen is acting up. So I had to retrace that line again. And now I'm going down and I'm going to actually trace some of the lines that are below. There is a line that is below that is going to be highlighted as well. So you're going to be able to do this on the left and the right hand side. So once you're done on the left hand side, complete it on the right. So now I'm going to go and start putting these little angles. And so like I said, this is different than the other side. So these are options for you. So I'm going to thicken up my top line. Then I have this little angle that I'm going to pull inward at an angle towards the bottom right hand corner of my piece. So there's these little bumps and angles that are in the photograph and that is what we're working on. The angle itself, however, is not perfectly vertical straight up and down. It has a slight slant and it's a lot thicker on the top. So as you're working, you're going to notice that they align with um, some of the sections that are above. So it doesn't align with the circles. It aligns with those vertical um, blocky parts that are L-shaped little shadows, it aligns with that. So I align it up with each one of those and then that way it works out and it fits with it. On the left hand side, I'm just going back in and making them a little bit bump, a thicker line. So you could do it this way or you could do it the way on the right. Now inside here, we have vertical lines that we're going to be placing in just into that one little itty bitty space of that little um, section we just worked on. So this little section has vertical lines that are going up and down, which is going to be the texture that's on the surface of that space. It's also going to help with the shading. You're not making them really far apart or really close together. They're just nice, nicely spaced. Look at the photograph. You'll actually see that texture that I'm talking about. Now we're going to repeat on the right hand side. But remember, I don't have all those little bumps and crevices that we just worked on really hard on the left hand side. But if you would like to, you could always um, do it this way where they're just vertical lines that are shading. Now I'm going to be adding on the right hand side all my other lines that are needed from below. So there's a highlighted section and then there's the overlap hang that we need as well. So this little area right here is in highlight. Then we have the, uh, the overhang that we have um, to shade. The overhang itself 
you're going to want to make sure that you are shading the direction of your um, vanishing point. Before I do that, I am going to go in and just make the underside of those things that we just worked on, that line that they went and touched, I'm going to make that line a little bit thicker and a little bit more prominent so it's more noticeable with inside the image. I'm going to repeat that on the right hand side. Now there's a highlighted space, so this little gap right there, there's a highlight. Underneath that highlight, in this darker area, there are these little boxes that go all the way down to the left. However, you do not have to put them in. So the left hand side, I will place them in. On the right hand side, I will not. So you could choose either or on how you'd like to do it. If you want to add a little bit more detail, what these little boxes are, are just little cubes. But we are not going to sit there and draw little cubes throughout the whole thing. An option what you can do to make it a lot simpler is to draw two more lines that are in between the overhang um, top and then the bottom of the overhang. I'm just drawing two more lines that are in there. What this is going to be is going to be the top of the box that is um, the face of it, which is lit up by the light a little bit more. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start shading. This is an option one for this one is start shading just little chunks of space and leave a gap in between, which is the face of that box. Or, in just a second here, I am going to just make a whole bunch of dashes that are going down and then shade in between like every other one, which is going to end up making it so that there's a dark shadow, which is the right hand side of the box, and then there's the face of the box, and then the right hand side of the box, and you're going to repeat that as you go down. However, as you move down to the left hand side, they're going to get really, really small and really, really tight. So here you're going to see, I'm going to just start filling in one of the little boxes. I'm going to leave a gap and then I'm going to fill in another box. Leave a gap, fill in another box. And I'm going to continue this all the way down. Remember, this is an option to get those little boxes. Otherwise, you can follow along with what I do on the right hand side. So now that we have all, our, all of our little boxes shaded, we need to shade the actual surface of that plane. However, it's going to go to the right hand vanishing point because it's the underside and that angle is going to the right. If you notice the line that we just started next to is also going to that right vanishing point. This is the mistake that you guys um, heard me talk about before. I actually uh, shaded in a little bit too much and also my camera died and I had to recharge it. So if you look closely, you can see on the left hand side, I shaded it. On the right hand side, I started to shade. However, I don't have those boxes that are there. Spit up on my pen. So right here, these lines are going to the left vanishing point. This is exactly the same thing I just did on the left hand side. You just were not able to see it because the camera went out. Do you notice the highlighted line above as well? So these lines are going to the left vanishing point. Then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do a slight gradient. So what I mean by that is the top hand side and the bottom hand side are going to be a little bit darker, which is going to help define that space a little bit more. So the part towards the building I made a little bit darker and then I made my line separation a little bit lighter. Now we have to work on the little sculpture, the little reliefs that are below. The relief itself, what a relief is, it's a sculpture, so it's a three-dimensional form. However, the backhand side, you cannot walk around because it's attached to the building or attached to a, a plate or something, whatever it's attached to. So we have to draw these reliefs. So they're only coming out and bubbled out a little bit. What these reliefs are is a whole bunch of little people or uh, horses and stuff. If you look really closely, you can see um, little structures there of like human forms. However, because this is a very small drawing that we're doing, you're not going to be able to draw all those people. So we're just drawing suggestions of people. So I'm kind of thinking about when I'm sketching in here, the little heads and little things like that, which you should have had little sketches of that within your pencil. If you notice, I only sketched some of it within pencil for your demo and the rest of it I'm just going to make up as I go here. So I'm thinking about darker spots 
filling in some of those negative spaces. Also, towards the end here, we're going to have to um, yeah, fill it in left and right, continue doing this. I'm going to end up fast forwarding this video here for you. Take your time to make it look a little bit more random. Don't do a whole bunch of figure eights and stuff. So if you do like one figure eight, maybe you do one that has like a little circle on top and a little upside down U. Maybe there's a couple that look like little snowmen, something like that within it. If you look closely to mine at the end of this video, I have um, stills that are there or um, there's some stills that are at the uh, files that you can have as well that you'll be able to see, which they are just little shapes that I'm creating that I'm almost imagining scribbling little people. I'm shading the top hand side to give it a little gradient. So there's a cast shadow that is being um, projected onto the surface of that face from not being hit by the lip that is above it. So as you see here, I'm going in and I'm just making that top section a little bit darker. I did it already on the left hand side and you can see how it stands out. I'm going to shade the white section with inside here on the right hand side with vertical lines, keeping them slightly further apart, similar to what I had done above because this side is in shadow. Now I'm going to take my straight edge and I'm going to do, because these are longer lines, so I'm going to do those lines that are right below. making sure that my straight edge is in the proper spot and the pen is able to hit the pencil line that I had drawn below. Now on this upper line, you may notice that there is a little bit thicker uh, appearance to it. So you can either make the line a little bit thicker by going back and forth on it a few times to make it a thicker pen line, or you can make little upward strokes similar to what I am doing. I'm making tiny itty bitty upward strokes. I'm going to do it on both sides. And so you can do this to give that texture that you see within the photograph, or you can just make it a thicker line. Now we're going to start working on the reliefs that look like they're framed in. I'm going to do one of them with you, and this is as fast as I'm drawing here. Um, and then the other two I'm going to speed up. So I worked on the top frame, and I showed you you could use your ruler. However, I actually made a mistake because I couldn't see where my pencil lines were. So I have a line that's going over a little bit. But sometimes your mistakes, you just have to let them be and or work with it. So here I'm going to, on the left hand side, start shading and making my thicker space so that you can have um, that shadow, that drop shadow, because the sun is not hitting that area, so it's being cast, the shadow is being casted upon the relief. So I'm pushing that and making it a little bit thicker. I'm going to work on the left and the top hand side of the interior as well. Both of these areas are also going to have a little bit darker tones. So here I'm going to go into the top section and shade in a little bit onto the actual relief. The bottom hand side when you're working on it, you'll notice that I'm going to place in a thicker line because there is a little bit of a drop shadow there. Once you have finished the exterior space, you're going to start working on the interior which is very similar to the upper area that you guys just worked on. So the relief with inside is going to be just a little bit um, 
suggestive of people again. So what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at where are the darkest parts with inside the photograph and I'm plopping those onto the piece of paper. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at where are the medium tones and I'm going to place those on the paper. And then that's all I'm doing and then I'm going to cross hatch or hatch in areas that need it. Just do your best in this area and what you can. Here I'm cross hatching or hatching I meant on the back hand side because that area itself is a little bit darker but not black. Now I'm going to continue doing this on the left and the right hand side to finish up the reliefs. I'm going to go into fast forward mode and uh, do exactly the same thing. Looking at where are my shadows, filling those in, and where are the lighter points and where are the um, darker points for within each of those areas. Looking at the sculpture or the relief itself, you want to think about where and how big those subject matters are. Some students struggle with these areas a little bit, so just remember, I am scribbling but I'm scribbling with a thought process. I'm scribbling with where are the darker points, where are the lighter points. So right here I'm placing in the darkest points. I filled in some of the gray areas and then here I'm going to go back in and fill in the darker points again, making them even darker. I avoided some of the highlighted areas while I'm working on this. Now we're going to start working on this archway. The archway I'm not going to fast forward much with inside because this is a lot of it is new for you. However, the left hand side, when you're working up this little plane right here, there are two singular lines that are going upward. Both of those lines are going to help define where is this top line that's underneath that's going to be a cast shadow again. So it's going under the building so light source is not hitting it. So we need to shade that in. So I really am just going back and forth until I get a nice black. Now I'm going to start working on the relief that is here. It almost looks like a figure with like a bow and arrow or something. So what I'm doing again is I'm going to look at where are those shapes that I could place in that are in shadow. However, if you notice, I did not trace the archway at all on the left hand side where this figure is. The figure itself is going to help push that space forward because it's going to be still in highlight. So I did not trace it because there isn't really a black line there because it's a white line. I'm going to continue this on the right hand side as well. However, this one right here, um, you notice I have, I'm able to push in a little bit darker. Now I'm going to work on that little spool. The spool itself has a really black space. So I am just like coloring in basically where it's black. And then I'm gonna go in on the top and do slight little curved lines that are going with the curvature or the contour of the actual shape. Right here on this archway we have the lines that are there that's going to be in the shading. So I'm blocking in a few spots really quick to help with definition and then I'm going to shade this archway. This archway right here has a very soft shading to it. If you look carefully there is a texture. That texture is going along with the curvature of the actual archway. So if you notice my little tiny dashes are staying um, at a like radial effect almost. So they're starting off more horizontal or ortho orthogonal line to the right vanishing point and then as I come up, they're going to go more straight. Now I'm going to be placing a darker line that's on the interior of that space. And I'm going to continue that shadow on the right hand side. This one right here kind of stops about three fourths or halfway um, on this little spot and becomes a little peak. This little space up here I'm going to shade doing crosshatch so I'm following the curvature of the actual 
um, archway and shading in just where those little hatch marks that I just did were just to get it slightly darker. Now we're going to work on the interior of the archway. So I'm getting that curve there where I'm actually tracing the pencil line that I have. Making sure I'm very careful with that space. So we just trace that. There is another line that's in between on this white space. It's just a singular line. And it ends a little bit before. We're going to work on the interior archway within that shade, the, the shadowed area. And inside there, there's some detail. So here there's another relief with inside of it. However, it's not figures and stuff. It is um, different patterns and things like that. So you need to make sure that here it's just, it looks like a rectangle with another rectangle with inside of it. However, it's the same curvature of that arch. What I'm doing right now is I'm just hatching with inside the center area because it's not black, but it's not um, lighter than the, there's like a little baby bar that goes around it that's a little bit lighter. So just be observant of what you are actually shading. Now I'm going in and I'm shading the darker points with inside that archway. So this archway has a dark, then it has a light spot, and then it has that medium gray um, within that bar space. Now we have to shade the entire archway itself. However, these lines, you're going to go to the right vanishing point. So making sure you're thinking about this line that is right above or right below this pen line that we're doing right now, that angle, we're going to keep it at that angle. But as we go up, it's going to slightly turn downward. So the left hand side is going slightly higher than the right. However, it's not going to move that much. So if you're concerned about it, it would be better just to keep that same line or that same angle as the line that's below and don't change it. It's better to do that than it is to go too much. I'm just going to continue hatching and figure out the value that I want it to be. Looking at the space on the face of the actual arch versus the interior space where we're working on the shadow area and making sure that they make sense with one another. How much darker do I have to go? In relationship. You can always go back and make things darker too. So if you're not quite sure, just finish it off where you feel comfortable and you can always go back and make it darker. You cannot make things lighter uh, once you have drawn it. I'm going to start tracing some of those pen or pencil lines that we have for the little banner part that goes all the way around. So working on that um, area, make those little lines. This space that's right here is another overhang. So if you notice, I'm hatching and my lines are going towards the right hand side vanishing point. And I'm gonna do the same on this. Now we have those weird little vertical sections that we're gonna put in there. So right in here, there's like little, two little spaces those you're going to think about one's going to go to the right one's going to go to the left you're going back and forth back and forth between them so there is this little bump out don't forget about him that's sticking right in here i'm just going to finish it off right off right here and you have that drop that's below and it's going to be just filled in black the bottom part Now finishing off the pencil lines on this space that's here, making sure you trace them in pen. Yeah. 
when you're looking at your piece, double check on how you think you're doing. So where you're at, what direction your pencil lines, your pen lines, I meant have to go and making sure you're thinking about value. So as you're looking at it, think, do I have to go darker? Do I have to go lighter? What direction do my marks have to actually go? So here, if you notice, I'm going at a half Jane lines to the right vanishing point, making that space a little bit darker. Now I need to take this section and go to the left vanishing point again. And if you notice, there's a light little band right above it. It's just one of those decorative things that are on the piece. Some students don't notice it, but if you do, great. If you don't, don't worry, don't panic if all of a sudden you're like, wait, I don't have that line. You're going to continue that on the right hand side. I will fast forward the right hand side. I'm going to complete the left hand side with you. The right hand side, you'll see me sketching, but at eight times the speed or four, I don't remember what I said it at, four times or eight times the speed. Now we're going to do vertical hatching in here. So I'm just doing vertical lines and I'm going to go all vertical all the way around. So here I'm just making it a little bit darker because it's in shadow. Then this little section here, if you look at your photograph, you're going to notice there's part of it's in shadow and part of it's in highlight. Then the part that's in shadow right here, we're just going to do a lot tighter. So if you notice, I'm doing the same mark making as I did on the left. It's just my pencil or pen lines are a lot tighter, which is going to make it appear to be darker. Now there's a cast shadow that's being projected onto that surface. So I made that little um, line a little bit thicker in that area. We're going to continue this on the right hand side of the archway. Now we're going to work on the vertical line that is right here but I am not drawing a vertical line. So what I'm doing is I'm hatching, going to the right vanishing point angle. So they're not perfectly horizontal, they're at a slight angle upward. And I'm only hatching because that line, I don't want to have a sharp edge to because it's in such highlight. If you want to put a line there, that is totally fine. The right hand side of it, I am placing a line in because there's a darker groove with inside that space. Now we're going to hatch in these areas. So first what I'm doing is I'm going to be placing in the text. So there's um, words that are written on the walls and so I'm placing those in before I put my hatch lines going to the right vanishing point on here. My camera glitched at this time again. Sorry about that. But if you notice all I did is hatch going to the right vanishing point and making it so it's a good enough value difference from the face of the wall to the shadowed area. Um, and right now what I'm doing is I'm just filling in some of those gaps because I wasn't too close to the edge of my pencil or my vertical lines. So I'm kind of filling that space in. Now I'm going back in and making some of my text a little bit darker as needed. This area right here is in a highlighted area. So the sky is actually darker than it. So technically, if we were painting this, we would leave this alone. However, I'm just gonna put an implied line here so that remember is a broken line. So it's not entirely straight. So if you notice, I did a kind of dashes throughout it. I didn't have it entirely there. However, if you'd like to just draw a straight line all the way and not do implied, that is fine. We're gonna start working on these pillars. So the left hand side, and the right hand side are going to be the same. However, the right hand side I'm going to demo for you because it's a little bit bigger. You're going to trace the bottom hand half. And once you're done tracing it, we're going to start working on the actual sculpture. So trace all those pencil lines that you have. Also notice is that some of my pen lines I'm doing are a little bit thicker because if you look at the photograph, there's some areas that are in shadow because of how it overhangs. Now this facing wall right here, we're doing the same thing as we did with that other wall in the interior of that arch. So it needs to be in shadow. So it goes to the right vanishing point, just hatching. The sculpture is very similar to all those reliefs that we just worked on. So because technically it's a relief, the backhand side is still attached to the actual building, but 
Um, here I'm placing in the darkest areas, so the shadowed areas. When I'm working on those shadowed areas, we need to make sure you're thinking about um, what direction they go, how big they are, uh, where they are in relationship to one another, or just do the best that you can for this space. The sculpture itself is not going to be photorealistic. You're suggesting a sculpture. So take your time um, and look at what you are drawing. Here I'm going to fast forward just a little bit. So I'm still looking at the darker spaces. Every once in a while I'm going to throw in some hatching lines to just add a little bit more texture to it. So up here I have some hatches that are moving off to the right just to add a little bit of, um, it almost looks like a wing. I'm not sure what it is. And then there is um, some darker points that I just want to make it this have a little bit more depth. I'm going to continue doing the same thing I just did on this to that, making sure the height of it makes sense going to the right vanishing point. So the top of that sculpture should be going to the top of the other one with, I meant to the left vanishing point. Um, so they are technically the same height. Now that we have those pieces done, we need to work on the inside. I did notice that I did not shade the side of that podium. Make sure you guys do that. So right here, um, that little podium that's right there, I totally forgot to shade it. So make sure you guys shade that little podium's right panel. We're gonna work on the interior space of that archway. So inside, um, some students choose just to shade it really, really dark, so nothing is in there. But for those of you that feel, yeah, I could do this, want to try to achieve something a little bit more, um, and are enjoying this process, I do suggest to try to draw what you see within inside the space. So what is happening is that there's an archway that's like a walkway. It just crosses, so there's an arch on the right-hand side, left-hand side, and then the front and the back that you can walk through. So it's kind of like a T. And so right here, you're able to see that transition of those spaces. So we have the inside arch and then we have the exterior arch as well. Then up on top, you have these, um, like the upper area, it's like tiled appearance of the ceiling where there's a whole bunch of little boxes that are within inside a box, within inside a box. So just do your best with that space uh, to make it look like there's something happening there. So here I just drew the curvature of the archway with inside of it. And then I drew some lines that are going to the vanishing point on the right hand side. And now I'm shading that area black. So in the spots that are. So it's almost like the exterior part of it is going to be black then there's going to be a lighter area and then inside is going to be darker again. So as you see here, I'm doing the outside space currently of those boxes. And it is like straight up black right there. Now with inside here, I'm going to start doing the little box with inside the box. That little box inside the box is also black. So there is a almost like a figure eight right there that's left out. Now I'm going to do a hatching that's going to the right vanishing point. So an angle going towards the right vanishing point just to make this area darker because it is underneath and it's in um, shade. So there's not much light hitting it. Now I'm doing hatching or cross hatching I meant. So I'm going with the curvature of the actual structure to make it even darker. Within the actual image, it now looks black to you potentially. However, when you're sitting and it's in front of you, you actually can see all the information still within inside there. Now we have one of those other archways that's there, but right above the arch, there's some stripes. So I'm just gonna work on those little stripes just really quick, making sure my lines are going to the right vanishing point. Sorry, my phone just beeped. Okay. 
So the same little relief that's on the outside is going to go inside here. This one, however, you don't have to be as careful with because it's not going to be as noticeable because you're going to shade over the top of it. So I'm just kind of putting this random little shape that's similar to the ones on the other side so that you can tell that there is similarity to them. And then I'm going to shade in that space with slight little hatching lines over the top of it, just gently, so that it is still technically there, but just in shadow. Now this little archway here, you're going to shade um, black. So as I'm going down this whole space, I'm just looking at the space and that the entire thing is just straight up black, so just kind of fill that gap in. Now we have to do these lines that are here, and these lines are going to the left vanishing point. So make sure that you're kind of thinking about this whole space here is going to be at a slight, slight angle downward on the left hand side. And I mean slight to the point that um, it almost appears that you're drawing horizontal. And we have that archway underneath there as well that we're going to end up shading that's similar to this. However, um, I'm just shading it really dark plopping in a couple little random little marks that suggest squares. So I just made like little ovals kind of things that are in there. Now the archway, the highlighted area, we have to shade so it's a little bit darker so it fits within that space. Now this I'm going to just go left and right hatching um, or you could do vertical, it's up to you, but this is going to still technically go to the left vanishing point. However, because we're so close to that horizon line, it's just going to appear that it, you're just going perfectly left to right. I'm just looking at some areas that are darker than others, making sure that I'm observing my actual image and not making anything up. Just cleaning up my sides a little bit. Sometimes it's hard when you're hatching to make sure it's like perfect along a line. So if you need to, you can make that line a little bit thicker on the side, which is just going to fill in some of those gaps. Now I'm just touching in and making things a little bit darker to make it work with the actual image. Now I'm going to take everything that you just learned on the left hand side and you're going to repeat it on the right hand side. However, there's no pillars. So this side, um, there's a little bit less information. Here there's some text that, that I'm just kind of scribbling little lines left to right um, that are suggesting like words. And then above that there's going to be a relief. So right in here I'm going to plop in those darker values like we did above um, on those other reliefs. So I'm placing that in there. So when I shade over the top of it, I would already have that information. In my pencil I already had those um, ceiling tiles that are placed in there. So I'm drawing the curvature of the interior of that arch, and then I'm going to draw those orthogonal lines that are going to the left vanishing point since we're inside. Then I'm going to be just boxing in baby little squares that are inside of that, leaving a white border around them. The squares are not perfect. They're actually, if you looked carefully, they kind of just look like blobs. So once you have completed the area on the inside, we now need to start working on that relief on the outside and start shading. 
so the archway shading and then the interior part of that archway shading. So now we're going to re go back to fast forward for a while, I think until the end of the video. Vertical lines, adding that cast shadow, making sure that the line is going to the left vanishing point here because you're underneath it so it was a drop so you're on the bottom side of it. Darkening it up with some hatch lines so cross hatching. Here I'm missing a line. Now I'm going to do make the top part similar to the left hand side making little hatch lines. Now I'm going to do those vertical lines similar to I did above. Here I'm just doing hatching, going to the left vanishing point since we're on that side now, going inside, so everything on this is going to the left vanishing point. This has that same thing on the other side, that little darker space that is in there. The relief. Go along with the curvature of the angle and then also orthogonal line going to that vanishing point or the curvature of the angle. So I did cross hatching in this area. So the contour of the form is really important to kind of think about. Now I'm doing vertical hatching. You can stop at vertical hatching if you have the value that you want, but I like the look of cross hatching. So I'm going in and adding a little bit more depth to it with darker values and making sure that the texture that's inside there is still showing. Darkening up that little highlighted ridge by just doing a couple little hatch lines that are going over the top of it with a radial form. This line right here needs to be in shadow, so very similar to the one on the left hand side that I had done. Alright, so now we have these um, building structures and stuff within ours. So remember I said, let's just make them into like trees in the background. So here, I'm just going to scribble. So I just showed you a few little marks, different types of marks that I'm going to be making. So some of them look like a little oval, some of them look like little Y's, for example. And my hand is just kind of go for it. So you're going to, or a little baby, um, like whatever shape, like little bees or whatever you're going to be creating. So just let your hand kind of scribble around. But what I'm looking at or thinking about, really, because I'm thinking about it because we're making this up right now, is I'm thinking about what do trees look like? So, or what do bushes look like? How does the light actually hit it? So the right hand side of our building is technically supposed to be darker. So therefore, you can start thinking is that bushes are going to also have shadows on the right hand side as well. But I want these to appear to be um, darker so that it allows the subject matter, which is our building, to stand out. I'm going to have some medium values and dark values, so like black, but um, you don't have to have it as big. You can make them a lot smaller. I don't, um, depends on who you are and how you drew it, what is back there, but buildings, more buildings would take way more time. So really I did, I just scribbled, but really tight scribbles. And now I'm going in and just kind of plopping some darker spots with inside there. Now we have those people that I just had said, I suggested. So if you are a person that chose to add the people, all I'm doing is going in and I'm going to have a couple little scribbles over the top of my pencil marks that are suggesting um, people with inside the space. But what I like about the people that are there, it helps you show how big this structure actually is. So with the people that are closer up, they're going to be smaller because as people are further away, they always appear smaller. So remember, there's a lot of people in our photograph. We did not even come close to putting that many. Make sure you sign your work. Be proud of it. It's a lot of work. Here's just a like photograph from my phone of the piece. So in case you 
wanted to look at it a little bit closer or um, I will also have these on the classroom as well.